Hey everybody, welcome to Celebrate Longmont, the new channel for everything Longmont. Welcome to the show Celebrate Longmont, well, where we celebrate all things Longmont. And my guest today, I should say my name first, Matthew. I'm the host, and my guest is Ron Gallegos, who's a former council councilman. And uh, we've kind of developed a conversational relationship over the past few years. Yes. Um, a joint interest in Longmont. One of the things I love about Ron is he is a visionary. Thank you. Yeah. So. Um, he called me the other day and he's like, hey, I'm interested in um, serving the community, perhaps, again. Um, so today we're just going to chat about um, maybe your vision for Longmont and... Uh, also your vision. My vision, yeah. E equally, for me anyway, is an opportunity to go out and sign up, solicit people and find out what they're thinking, Okay. what the pulse is right now. Because, you know, I hate to be that old proverbial parade analogy where the, the parade is moving, but I wasn't paying attention, and now the parade is left on him at the end. So, <laughs> Like Santa Claus? <laughs> sort of like Santa Claus. <laughs> well, the parade doesn't is not over until Santa Claus goes by. <laughs> there you go. Anyway, so, Ron, is it true that you're perhaps considering running for council again? There is a vacancy, and I am putting a committee together right now, and I will be uh, launching my uh, attempt to get elected to council again. Okay, This wonderful. is a short-term uh, vacancy. This is what happened is the mayor got elected, she moved up, and her spot oh, has well, okay. two years left on that. She had a four-year term, and the mayor has a two-year term. So that's vacant now, and now we have to have a special election, and um, so we have to have some candidates. And, and that is in April, you're telling me? That is April 5th. April 5th, okay, so mark your calendars, April 5th. It will be a mail-in, mail-out ballot, like you traditionally have gotten, so you'll be getting something in the mail. Okay. And then you should be getting some information from time to time from my campaign or from me in the mail, because right now there's probably no other way to communicate with folks. Okay. I noticed that you have you have a Facebook page, you still have a website. Um, We're putting up a new website. We're modifying our old website. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Bringing and, it, making it up to date. And what current. is it? What is the website? Uh, it will be ronforcouncil.com. Okay, ronforcouncil.com. And uh, right now we have that little thing that says it's under construction. Oh. <laughs> it's a little man with a hard hat. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, maybe by this time next week it will be up and running. Okay. So tell us a little bit about yourself, Ron. Uh, I am one of those rare creatures... I am a native of Colorado, Okay. but actually mine was one of the first Spanish families in the state, so we're one of the first uh, families in the state, uh, about 1830. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, by training, I went to see you, married to an attorney here in town, and um, am in finance, do a lot of uh, lending, had done a lot of residential lending, now I do a lot of commercial lending things of that nature. So, you know, work with hard money lenders and with bank programs and SBA and da-da-da-da, now that I put you to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> but if you want to start a business, give me a call. I can help you through uh, creating a business plan, okay. getting an idea of where you want to go. Because I like when people get into business and they say, I want to borrow a million bucks. And I say, well, do you have your business plan? Huh? What's a business plan? Yeah, really. <laughs> do you have projections? Okay. Huh? Uh huh? Yeah. So it's a good to figure out what you're going to do so you know when you're there, when you've arrived. When you've arrived, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So speaking of arriving, so say, so if you get elected council, to city council, well, I mean, what's the main reason that you're running for council and what would you like to see happen in Longmont? In 1995, I was on council for one term. And when I got elected, I said there was... I had a list of about 11 things I wanted to accomplish. Okay. So I think it's important if you're a council member to have a plan, mm -hmm. to be fair with people. This is what I'm about. And in those days, uh, we didn't have a rec center. In fact, we had had three previous elections where the concept of a rec center failed. Wow. So that did, didn't happen. The museum in those days was probably a space of less than 400 square feet. Wow. 
so really the museum in those days consisted of a lot of Quonset, Quonset huts where we stored a lot of stuff, <laughs> but you never saw it because there was no display space. We really didn't have a building. Um, and then the senior center was getting a little long in the tooth. It was getting a little old and needed to be remodeled. Was it in the same place? Same place. Same place, okay. But we... In Roosevelt Park? Yeah. And we were able then, when we did the initiative to build a rec center, to build a new museum, and to remodel the, uh, the senior center, and it was important because they had a real limited kitchen, and Meals on Wheels is headquartered out of there. There's a public-private oh, partnership. Okay, I didn't know that. So yeah, it made it really hard because they were so had little space. pre little stoves and maybe some firewood in the corner. I don't know, <laughs> but it was it was really tough. So now it got much better, but you know the community continues to grow. So one of the things I have is probably again four or five things that I'm interested in, but really. But this notion of sustainability, it's really kind of popular right now. Yeah, it's a buzzword. It's a buzzword. Yeah. Uh, most of the emphasis is on environmental, mm -hmm. but there is another component, and the other component is kind of a financial component. What is the, the economic health of the business community, which is the economic health of our community? Because yeah. if we don't have jobs, we don't have sources of income, we don't have commerce, the city kind of ground, grinds to a halt and stops. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, we've been fortunate in the past that we've had a lot of high tech, but I think from my perspective, we're so close to Rocky Mountain National Park that it's an opportunity for Longmont to become a, a tourist destination. Mm -hmm. And maybe we do that f from a lot of planning where we get tourists to come in. And the nice thing about tourism is they come in on a Wednesday or a Thursday and then they stay through Sunday. We run them up to the park. They go up to see the bus. We come down at night and they go to our restaurants and stay in our hotels and we pick their pockets. I mean, they make contributions <laughs> to our community. But then they get on the yeah. airplane. Legally picking pockets. You know, right? Legally picking their pockets. Then they get Enticing back Enticing them to use their <laughs> Enticing money them here. To, yeah. Well, I, we want to give them a good environment. Yeah. Which means I think there's lots of opportunity for us to develop the community. You know, one of the things I've been kind of pushing is, we have a, a lot of focus on downtown, but I think there's a lot more we could be doing. You know, if you're in Spain and you have tapas, the, the idea of going in Spain and eating tapas is you go from restaurant to restaurant to restaurant. So if we had a pedestrian mall, say from Third Avenue to Sixth or maybe to Ninth, mm -hmm. and close it off. That's like that's a big idea Ron has here. Big we, idea. We could then we could then recruit art galleries, uh, restaurants, uh, entertainment, so that it became an end destination. Mm -hmm. Bearing in mind, we've got three great sites for parking today that are surface parking. In other words, they're parking lots. The other part of my vision is we need to really address affordable housing. So we could have a public-private partnership where we built long uh, buildings, uh, high buildings, uh, you know, multi-story buildings where people could buy a condo. There could also be a retail component and maybe the first couple of floors. And we could do the parking either on top, on the bottom, or internally. So we've got three spaces that would again add to the nuance of downtown, but create kind of a, a synergy. So if you they all work together, they're all working yeah, together, all work together. Um, which means that you can then begin to address transportation. And those of you that are familiar with Loveland, there's a couple of streets that go north and south. Well, there's no reason that we couldn't maybe talk to CDOT and relocate um, our designation as a state highway, put it on Airport Road, and then change the two streets. Know, Kaufman and Kimbark so that they're north-south streets. They then channel the internal traffic, the, the traffic that really wants to be in downtown Longmont. Mm -hmm. And those folks that want to go to Bertha or to Wyoming or Montana, wherever the heck they're going, Just through, yeah. you know, points north, could go all the way up airport, which is almost 95% finished. It ends at 17th now. Let's put a link around the the lake and let's hook it up to 66 so that we have another viable option in terms of a bypass. 
And you've had this idea for some time. I've been talking about this for a while. And, yeah. You know, uh, my understanding from talking with folks at CDOT is if we can make uh, a viable transportation improvement, there's nothing sacred about the designation of where the highway is today. Okay. Highways sort of like our rivers, they occasionally move. So let's... Like, that's interesting. <laughs> yeah. Highways are like rivers. May I quote you? Yeah, well, <laughs> now that we've just gone through a... A flood, we've seen, you know, what happens to the river. And they can change. It changes yeah, the course. Yeah, rivers can change, and, and yeah. certain events can change the river, the right. course of the river, yeah. Sometimes you bring in the Corps of engineer and Engineers, and they help and you change. They help you change, yeah. <laughs> so I, um, one of the things I think about cities is it's like there's, there's a gravitational pull, right? And you think of like, you know, think of a planet or a sun. The bigger it grows, the more gravitational pull it right. has. Right, And I think we need to see more of that in, in our downtown, our city. We need to have more of a, a cultural pull. Um, if you were to compare Longmont to a city like Boulder, for instance, there's not a lot of foot traffic on any given night in downtown. There's way more in Longmont than there was in the past. I mean, 2009 was pretty sad but well, after I, the Great Recession. I, I can remember <laughs> I had some friends from Chicago, and we were going to Boulder, mm -hmm. and this was about 7.30, and the lights were blinking, you know, on Kaufman. They had turned the lights red, and this fellow said, well, what's going on? Why are all the lights blinking, and why are they red? And I said, well, we've put the town to bed. <laughs> put the town to bed, yeah. And he didn't understand the concept of the traffic lights change because there really isn't, there wasn't in those days in 2008, 2009, much activity downtown. Yeah. I think it's getting better, but I think we have an opportunity to create what I call a postcard moment. Right now, people go to the park. And maybe on the north end, they stop and buy gas, or maybe they run into Walmart and, and buy junk food to eat in the car all the way up to Estes. But they don't really come into Longmont, so they miss the right. opportunity to wine and dine here, to yeah. see the sites that we and have. There's certain things. I've talked to people, I mean, over the past two, three, four years, I think, and, and one of the things is kind of stuck is this whole gateway signage project. I mean, we, we have very few gateway signs. If you could go straight from 66 all the way to Estes and never know you passed Longmont, because like we literally don't have any signs that say Longmont, right? So that's something like, I think, <laughs> I know there's things underway uh, and that's good, but it needs to get done. No, it, it really um, it really does, which means... Because we're, we're missing out on, I mean, Longmont should be the gateway to the Rockies. Like that's how, if I were to be in charge of, you know, yeah. Visit, visit Longmont or something, I would say, hey, we need to bill ourselves as we're the gateway to the Rockies. Well, um, and, and we're so close also, not only to the park, but we're so close to CU, CSU, and Greeley. And most of those, Boulder does not have one more inch of space left for conventions or activities of that nature. Right. Um, Fort Collins is in a similar uh, fashion and so is Greeley. So I think there's an opportunity for us to create tourism but also maybe build a convention center. Mm -hmm. Partner with a, a hotel to big, build a big multi-story uh, Four Seasons or a Ritz or something and do it along the river corridor so that we can do some thoughtful planning. Yeah, I'm not for pave, paving all of paradise but there may be a couple of miles that we can, that could be economically viable. Yeah, I think it could be thoughtful. Yeah, we I think do. we don't want to change. We obviously we don't want to change the character of our city, and we're not going to. No. But if we need some some resources in our city to be competitive with other communities, I feel. I, um, I think, and to, from my perspective, these are like quality of life uh, instances. Mm -hmm. These are things that we can do to bring us. Uh, and make us go to the next level. It's nice that we're an all-American city, but we are so close to Lyons, and we are so close to all that shale, all that rock. You know, it would be interesting if we had a, um, an initiative where we begin to develop an architectural nuance, a style downtown, mm -hmm. sort of like CU has this Renaissance style in buildings, we could have a, you know, sort of Santa Fe. Santa Fe is cute because it has an architectural nuance and a style. Mm -hmm. And whether or not you realize it, it's, it's artificial. The city fathers in the early 20s were really suffering. New Mexico has always been poor, but they figure, well, you know, we have all these people, all these sites and people want to come out here. We should create, you know, our kind of our own brand. 
and they did it by mandating that uh, commercials, buildings, all had to have a certain southwestern or Santa Fe style architectural uh, footprint. And it works. Hmm. So I think there's things we could do. Let's take it advantage of us being so close to lions and some of the natural attributes there. And we could put a lot of the facades on their facing. So mm -hmm. I think it's important also. Uh, here's what, you know, um, sustainability means this. Not only making sure that it's an attractive place for uh, businesses to want to locate and do business here, but it should be uh, an attractive place where people want to live. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure the solution, I think the solution really should be to work and play in town as much as possible. Mm -hmm. So I'm not sure a train to Denver is the answer. I'm not sure um, a Musk spaceship to Denver is the yeah, answer. A Musk spaceship to Denver. Uh, you know, somebody in the last campaign was talking about partnering him with him, creating these little pods or something that would shoot along the interstate. Um, oh, wow. Very, well, uh, I remember Kyle Clark was saying, like, when the whole thing went down RTD in Longmont, you know, and, and he said, the moon's going to get a train before Longmont will get a train, which I think is a shame. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and, you know, we're paying lots and lots of millions of dollars to that project, and we're not getting anything out of it. Yeah. So I've been saying we should get aggressive with RTD. Tell them we want our money Give back. Give us our money back, yeah. Yeah, if nothing else, we create our own internal RTD. Yeah. And maybe buses are free, and seniors can get across town. Yeah, enough of this, you know, people pushing long run around. I mean, right. you know, you got to... Teach people how you want to be uh, retreated, you know? <laughs> so, you Especially know, I, larger municipalities. Yeah, and, yeah, well, or other forms of government. Just because we're here in the northern part, you know, they kind of forget it, get us. And yeah, I'm, I'm really I'm really pro long run. Like, that's a big thing. Like, this 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 whole show, I want to be like, it's not about Republican, Democrat. It's about Longmont, you know? Like, it's like, hey, let's, let's celebrate Longmont. Where do we want to go as a city? Right. And um, I, I like to think big. And one of the kind of driving thoughts I have is like, where do we want Longmont to be in 50 years, 100 years? And that's where we should start thinking, um, what do great cities do and what do great cities have? Right. And right. I, think, I think if we think that way, then it's not a matter of we're thinking too big or we're dreaming too big. Or it's like, what do great cities have? And we talked about, I know there's initiatives to get performing arts centers going, convention centers. Um, there's things like that, and I think development really, along the river corridor. Yeah, the, and that's exciting. There's, um, I know two organizations. I think the city's behind something, Steam, but then we also have uh, the Longmont Performing Arts Initiative working on a performing arts center. Um, and I think those sort of things are on. I think it's like let's just plan on doing it. Like let's just plan on doing well, it. And, and if it takes yeah, ten it, years, it, twenty it, years, I would like to see it be shorter and quicker. But right, right let's make now, a plan it. from a finance perspective. Money is as cheap as it has ever been. Mm. So we could go out and through the bonding authority uh, of the city, bond a lot of this money and do a public-private partnership like with Four Seasons or somebody and build a beautiful uh, center, um, convention center with gardens, maybe, you know, an outdoor amphitheater so that we could yeah. have Shakespeare in that's the park. So, uh, that's huge. That's so important. Gardens. We'll get a beautiful gardens in the summer. Uh, there's lots of things we could do and take again advantage of the fact that we're so close to the park and uh, it's people move here and love it because they, you know uh, I always try and convince my friends from California that you know they need to buy a shovel and lots of parkas because it snows so much here and you have to have <laughs> sleds and sled dogs and because <laughs> I really want them just to come during the summer but then leave you know? <laughs> but uh, Having said that, there's some tension. You know, lots of people would like Longmont to be the way it was in 1970. Well, folks, I think that train's left the station. It's yeah. not going to be that way. But as what you said, where we can be thoughtful, and I think that's where my experience in the past, having been on council, having been on the Planning and Zoning Commission, having been on the Board of Directors of National League of Cities, having been on the Board of Directors for the Colorado Municipal uh, League, I bring a lot of uh, on-the-ground experience there, so you're not, um, you know, having to teach me a lot of tricks because this old dog has a lot has of tricks. Has a lot of tricks. <laughs> oh, that's good. And we've been there and done that, you know. So if you, if you're in, 
I like that. If you're an old dog and you've already learned the tricks. <laughs> right. If I could say that. You you could actually spend, learn, the, learn the tricks before you get spend there. Spend less it? time trading. I'm already party broken, trained and whatnot, <laughs> you know. Uh, and I, uh, kidding aside, I was involved in that council and they, I actually went to Toronto and saw what they were doing when they were talking about broadband and doing the cable. Wow, yeah. And that was in 95. And then for whatever reason, we sat on it for about 10 or 15 years and Comcast then got nasty and wanted to take it from us and we put up a good fight. And now I think we got next light and you know, next it's just light. wonderful. So I, you're, I you're home and partially there. responsible. Well, that council was, it wasn't my initiative, council, yeah. but I came back and said, guys, hey, other communities are doing this. We should do this, you know. And we were like, Lama was one of the first, it was or the first. one of the first in the country yeah. to do it. To do it, yeah. So, and it's a great resource right now. You know. We did the same thing. We had an opportunity to acquire Sandstone Ranch, and we did. We said, well, you know, we need additional parks. I think one of the he measures I have is the health of the community is measured in terms of how much we have in terms of park and the ability for, for recreation and whatnot. Mm -hmm. We're probably, from my perspective, and just listening to people out there, at capacity in terms of our rec center. In fact, to be honest, probably about we, ten years ago. <laughs> yeah, I think the day we we opened it, it was antiquated. Uh, unfortunately, in those days, um, Lafayette had just finished the Burger Center, and Lafayette in those days was about fifteen thousand people. And we said, "Oh yeah, we need a rec center like Lafayette." Well, we were already forty thousand people, and we're past 40 you know yeah. so we probably need another rec center or two and you know my chosen spot right now our favorite is garden acres we don't have to acquire any real estate there's a big presence there we've got it there yeah so that's a good idea that would be an opportunity so yeah i think i think what you're saying is like uh, we we need to provide these resources in Longmont because if we don't people are going to go somewhere else oh yeah and that's like you know my thinking young people go find what they want to find why shouldn't they do it here in Longmont? Right. whether it's sports arts entertainment you know nightlife um why don't we you know, music venues like and so i think Longmont needs to think that way like we need to think that way i think it's important well, you know, and like you say, there are other communities that are waking up, and if we don't do it, they're going to do it. Yeah. If we don't build a performing arts center, Loveland will. If we don't build like, a, a convention center, Loveland will. You know? Well, Loveland's already got one. Yeah, they, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so, but we need to be able to, if we don't have them, we can't compete. But, but ours could be a little bit different, more in terms of having a hotel on site and having the amenities having a performing arts center and maybe an art gallery or, or an art center at the same time. Lots of meeting rooms and create, you know, a, a hub. So a lot of activity take, can take place there, not only for tourism, but for the community as well. Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot, a lot of opportunity there. So those are the things that I think we should be thinking about and talking about. Mm -hmm. Because if we look, you know, the last uh, maybe three or four councils, the, the big watermark, <laughs> mixing my metaphors here, was the flood. Okay, well, we haven't yeah. really done anything since the flood. That's not to say that the city hasn't gone on. We've made some improvements in wastewater. We've made some improvements, yeah. you know, with the, the dams and whatnot. And those the, are... The bridges, reinforcement, those are, everything. Re those are important. But that's really, if you think about it, I, mean, I think we talked about this a little bit before, but um, people can get into kind of a, um, just a management kind of like, um, marking time, sort of. Thing. Right, right. Instead of, so that's really is reactionary because we're having to spend resources on something that happened that was bad, as opposed to going on the attack as a community, and say where do we want to be in the next fifty years, and you you know you can push a lot of paper around your desk or you can go make things happen. And I think as a community we should be leading the charge with through vision. Uh, my office is in the first uh, bank tower there, first uh, on Seventeenth and Main. And we're on the fourth floor, so we can look out there. And we, my wife has a beautiful, like a 360 degree uh, windows on all sides. Anyway, at three o'clock on 17th and Main, oh yeah, it's like World War III. The traffic is just unbearable. Okay, and it's <laughs> it's north and south, but it's also it's on bad. 17th that it's really getting bad. So it's you, you talk about maintenance. Well, yeah, we can add uh, uh, three or four little parking spots downtown. That isn't going to cut it. Oh, we really need to deal with uh, 
parking and the transportation issue. And uh, like I say, where we can drive incentives so that people can live and work in town and celebrate downtown, celebrate the community here, we don't need a train. We don't need spaceships. <laughs> I think we need to concentrate. I think I, de I debate there. We need spaceships. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I'd like to see them in my lifetime. <laughs> so I think those are the things. So right now I'm kind of doing a listening campaign, okay. talking to people, telling them what I think that I'm about, but really want to, wanting to ask them, you know, do we have enough library books? Do we have enough opportunities in the arts for, for young folks? Um, are there things we're missing, you know? And, um, the school is now adding an aquatic center. That, that'll be one good thing. That's that exciting. Was, yeah, that yeah. Was my, I think you know we get into sports. I think Longmont should own one sport. Like I, I don't care if it's swimming or rugby or something. You know, or ice, ice hockey, lacrosse. Like the city, like uh, Glendale. Actually, they build a rugby stadium and right, they do. Right. They have, I think, semi-professional rugby leagues and they play a lot of soccer broadcast. too. Broadcast, and I think that's where I think you know. It's important for leaders like to get in public office to be like, hey, let's do something as a community. Yeah. Let's yeah. own something so we can, uh, you know, move vision forward and give give children, young youth, an opportunity to, to be involved in something bigger. Well, and, and, and I was on the site selection committee of the, the golf course years ago, so we were I, we were we started when there were just empty ground and we wow. had three or four sites. Till we finally settled on that site and settled on the, the golf course uh, developer that we got. But yeah, I mean, I think there's some opportunities and there's some additional opportunities that, you know, there was discussion of about a, a hockey rink and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And um, for whatever reason, it didn't come to fruition. But just because it didn't happen one time doesn't mean that we couldn't, uh, you know, tee it up again and maybe look at it. But as long as we have the viability and the community is healthy, you know, there used to be an indicator years ago, there was a study called Envision 2020. Mm -hmm. That's how old I am. Oh, wow. And we were looking at what it would be like in 2020. Well, now we're 2022. We're past Scotland. I'm going to have to pull out that old document and dust it off and see what we were planning. Yeah. But um, so, some of those things have come to pass. Some of them uh, we didn't even think about. Yeah. And some of them we're now stuck with. Transportation is a real big one. Affordable housing is a big one. Um, affordable housing is one of those things that, yes, we need to have all the open space. But remember, every inch of open space comes, it means that maybe there's less regular space. Not that I want to build apartment houses from here to New York, but we have to have, uh, I think, a viable uh, means of housing people in the community and uh, 16 18 2200 dollars a month for a person working making 12 dollars an hour just yeah. isn't going to cut it no those people are having to move to kansas almost and commute into longmont <laughs> to work on a daily basis right and you know that's people move out of town yeah. if they can't afford to live here yeah it's crazy well and i'm having people who tell me that you know they've lived and they've paid their house now, and they wanted to retire in Longmont, but they don't know if they can stay because suddenly the taxes are very high on their house. It's appreciated now. Everything is more expensive, such as the nature of the beast. Yeah, so affordable housing is important, yeah. It's big, and it, workforce housing is, is a big issue right now. So, um, you know, we could mandate that all the policemen and the fire people and whatnot and all the city employees have to live in Longmont. But right now, they couldn't afford to live in Longmont because the real estate is so high. Mm -hmm. So unless we had a program, some incentive, so that the city helped them acquire something, so then we could mandate that they have to live in town. Because I think, from my perspective, the fire and police pers personnel should live in their community. Mm. And I think the people who work for the city should live in the community. Uh, you know, if you don't buy into the city, you kind of wonder. So, okay, so interesting. Yeah, so you kind of want people to have a skin in the game. So skin in the game. <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. Interesting. Yeah. Well, Ron, is there anything, this has been a good conversation, um, and I hope to talk to you again sometime soon. Is there anything else that you haven't said that you'd like to tag No, no, on? I just, you know, from my perspective, we have an opportunity to add somebody who has some business experience, okay. who has had some government experience, 
because we get a lot now, it looks like the last couple cycles, council people who have never been on any boards or commissions who really don't kind of understand what they got themselves into. So the first thing they want to do is meet less frequently in hopes that the problems will go away. Oh. And they're not going to go well, away. Yeah, you probably need, like in a city, you probably need a healthy mix of... Uh, I think you do. Yeah. To get I, a balanced view on the whole community, I think council should represent you it know, should the be. large bro breadth of you know the community. But uh, let me say, I'm no stranger to the neighborhoods. Okay. I used to be president of the neighborhood group leaders when we had seven organized neighborhoods. And I think the last count is there were 42 now. 42, wow. So, yeah, yeah, so. Okay. And I was liaison to the library board and the police department and whatnot, so. All right, well, run, time. run for city council. Thank you. I'd <laughs> like to earn your vote and trust and respect. Yeah, well, let's, hey guys, thanks for watching today. It's been a good conversation. Don't forget to celebrate Longmont. And if you'd like to chat with me sometime, you know somebody who's passionate, crazy about our town, I'd love to hear from them. So you can follow us on Facebook, Celebrate Longmont, and on YouTube channel, you see our latest videos. So God bless you and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you, Matthew. If you enjoyed this conversation, be sure to subscribe to our channel by hitting this button here or watch another video.